Hey everybody, Will Hamilton here, and in this video I'm going to teach you how power is actually kind of overrated at the rec level, and how you can make your serve a weapon even if you don't actually hit the ball that hard. Now we've got the whiteboard here, the other dry erase board with the court is sitting over there, but we're just going to have to make do with this, and I've obviously drawn a tennis court up here. So power is overrated, and you know, it, I think at the rec level, a lot of people say to themselves, well, I'm just going to get up there and I'm going to try and hit as hard as Andy Roddick. And a lot of people want to break that 100 mile an hour threshold. That's kind of a big one when you're hitting, when you, you hit three figures. But if you only get this thing in 20% of the time, then that's not good, right? I mean, you don't get 20% first serves is you know, that's not going to get the job done. And if you're only getting 20% of your first serves in, that probably means you have no, you obviously have no consistency, but it also probably means you don't have very much placement. So if you're hitting that thing down the middle of the service box, if your opponent gets a read on it, a lot of those things are going to come back. What actually makes serves really difficult to handle is the placement. So let's take a guy like Andy Roddick. He hits 130, 130 miles an hour regularly. Well, if a good player knew where that serve was going every single time, let's say Andy just hit the, those serves down the middle every single time, most of those serves would come back. That wouldn't really give a good player too much trouble because it's kind of like that uh, in Major League Baseball, to use an example, if the, uh, if the pitcher leaves one hanging right down the middle of the plate, that ball is out of the park. So it's the same deal with the serve. What really makes the serves at the pro level so tough is the pace and the placement and the placement. So at the rec level, that pace is, is hard, to, hard to get consistently, and it's also hard to control. But if we ramp down the pace a little bit, let's say you only hit 75 miles an hour consistently, <clears throat> excuse me, then this might jump up to, oh, 60%, 70%. That could be reasonable if you practice a little bit. So if you could hit a 75 mile an hour serve and get it in 60 to 70 percent of the time, this is the first serve obviously, and you had placement, and that's key, the placement here, that's a great serve. And that, as we're going to see in a second, is actually a big weapon. So if you, you know, if you can hit 100 miles an hour, and you can do it consistently, and you've got the placement, then you can just stop watching this video right now. But most people don't have one of these things here and you really got to have the placement to, uh, so you so you got placement, I'm just going to write all this down so it's easier to follow, consistency, and then power. So if we switch colors, these two are what you want first, right there. Consistency and placement, if you can add a little power later on without sacrificing that stuff, cool. So let's see exactly how that works. We uh, and and what we're gonna what we want to do with the serve is is actually you know the, there's the, a lot of times people say well if I don't get that ace or that that uh, that forced error off my serve then my serve's not a weapon. But I would actually say what we want to do is make the serve a one-two punch. So first punch there is going to be a well-placed serve that you can hit consistently. So if we've got you down here, there we go. This is a Babolat, by the way. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> so if you, you've got your Babolat and you're serving out wide. We're going to put all our serves there. Boom. And your opponent is up here. He's got a Wilson. So your opponent's up there, and he's now hitting in the doubles alley. Now, if your opponent hits a mediocre return, then punch number two is the open court. So it would be over here, this big area, open court. So now what you've done, the serve essentially in this, in this instance has become a setup shot. So I'm getting my opponent off the court. I'm forcing my opponent to come up with the goods. The goods means not here. It means a shot there that's unlikely over here or maybe somewhere in this area and well struck. 
might be a little bit more likely. But anything here is kind of that pitch that's, that's you know, hanging, um, to use that analogy again. And then you just take these shots and put them in the open court. And you don't have to do anything too fancy. Just put it over there. But you are going to be in the driver's seat on all of these points. You are going to force your opponent to come up with a good return. And by the way, that's going to put mental pressure on your opponent because he's going to think to himself after you've gone through the sequence a couple times, oh, man, I've, I've got to come up with the goods with this return. He's going to start pressing a little bit more. That could lead to some errors. But it's not just that first shot. Let's say the shot goes in here and then you put it in the open court. Well, guess what? He has to come up with a good shot over here when he runs all the way over there. Oh, my God, sort of an arrow. As you can tell, my, uh, my drawing skills leave something to be desired. So he has to go all the way over there, and then his reply, well, he can't leave it hanging here. If he does that, then you could maybe put it in the open court. You could do something else with it. This might be where your, your style of play really kicks in. But this one-two punch forces your opponent to come up with a good shot, or again, you are going to be in the driver's seat. You are going to be in control and winning most of these points. So again, this is achieved without the power. And, uh, you know, like I, like I said before at the top of this video, the power here, this, this is like a, it, it's kind of intoxicating. Everybody sees the pros hitting hard and sees the pros hitting a lot of winners. That's what everybody wants to emulate. You actually want to emulate the consistency and the placement that the pros are able to achieve. Again, the pros can go 120 consistency with the placement. Unfortunately, us mere mortals, we can't do that. So we want to focus on consistency and placement get a one-two punch, maybe a one-two-three punch, depending on your style of play. Um, so try this out the, uh, the next time you, you hit the court, play a match, and uh, please let me know, first of all, what you think of the strategy. I'm sure there's some of y'all out there that are already using some, some version of this. Um, so let me know what you think, if, uh, if this is what you are currently using, what works for you. Um, after you try it out, let me know in the comments how it went. Please uh, like this video if you're watching on YouTube. There's a button somewhere down there. And I'll close with saying this obviously, just for clarity's sake, works on the ad court as well. And then you would hit over there for the, uh, for the open court. So thanks for watching this video, and I will see you guys soon.